This was the show that started it all for me. From about 8 to nearly 10 years old, I watched this show like it was homework. If you're unfamiliar, John and Kate Plus 8 features the Goslin family in Hershey, Pennsylvania. As the title suggests, there's the wife, Kate, her husband, John, and their eight children. Now, eight children is impressive, but even crazier, Kate was only pregnant twice. For her first pregnancy, she had twins Kara and Madeline. Her second pregnancy was sex tuplets. Yes, six babies at once. Their names are Alexis, Hannah, Aiden, Colin, Leah, and Joel. In their intro, they have a description for each kid. Kara is a sweetie and everyone's friend. Maddie is their free-spirited child. Aiden, the professor. Colin is stubborn yet kind. So I guess Kate decided he was a bad kid from the beginning. We won't get into that in this episode, though. Joel is sneaky and cuddly. Alexis is just wild. Hannah is the leader and mommy's helper. Leah is a tiny controller. I feel like these descriptions are kind of crazy to say to the public about your children, but all right. I didn't watch the show until it was on TLC. However, this show premiered on Discovery Health for its first two seasons. I remember being so amazed by the size of this family, but I also related to Kara and Maddie because I'm only six months older than them. Kate was a nurse who became a stay-at-home mom but still works on Saturdays, and then John is an IT analyst. I stopped watching the show around the time of John and Kate's divorce, but now I'm ready to deep dive back in. I know a lot has happened to this family, and I doubt I remember any of these episodes. Season one picks up with the twins being six and the sex tuplets being two. Episode one premiered on April 10th, 2007, and begins with them talking about the workload of having this many little kids at once. Today, they're going to a pumpkin patch, so Kate is responsible for the diaper bags with supplies and blankets and snacks. John is responsible for things like strollers, jackets, or anything else that will help Kate. We then start learning more about the twins' personalities. Maddie falls asleep as soon as she hits the pillow, and Kara's, like, Cara. chilling out in the dark till, like, midnight. Kara. So then in the morning, Maddie's up at the crack of dawn, and Kara sleeps late. I'm also amazed to see they don't own a fly swatter. I tried to get him yesterday. <gasps> I said Kara. not buy my food. I got him. <gasps> Did you just hit him on the counter? Yeah. So what? There's the loving couple I remember. At this point, they're considering each other the perfect teammate. We don't have to talk about it. We just say, we're leaving in an hour and a half. We know our jobs, that's it. They make it to the pumpkin patch and head out on a hayride to go pick some pumpkins. The early 2000s fashion is so valid. Look at them rocking those Gap sweatshirts. We then start seeing some of the sex tuplets personalities, starting with Colin. Like he, he tried was, to pick up a huge Like he was that hilarious. Atlas man. Like it's that. so Colin. Then Alexis. Alexis and she couldn't decide which was pumpkin great. was priceless. After getting their 10 pumpkins, they go to the orchard to go apple picking. Minus some inevitable moments of crying, the trip is quite successful. It's actually working out. I had no idea they'd like to pick pumpkins or apples this much. I thought it was more for the sake of tradition doing it. And of course, now they head for the corn maze. Who are we missing? Aiden, we're missing Aiden. I was panicked for a few seconds. I was nervous, I sent John running. Obviously, they find Aiden. <laughs> Watching and summarizing a pilot episode, especially with these eight little children running around, is so hard. I'm really trying to hit the key moments. So they head home and begin pumpkin carving. Kara is so relatable here. I cannot stand the texture of pumpkin. It's so cold and slimy. 
Just pretend it's Today brains. Something else. Here, you John was still carving a pumpkin when Kate decided she wanted to start cleaning up the kids. So they get into a quick argument about John helping, and Kate admits she finds herself getting panicky very quickly, sometimes about the mess and whatnot. I just get to that point where I just need to go get a bucket and towels and I need to clean it up. The episode wraps up with John saying this. I can't imagine a different life. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Well, this is the real ending to the episode. Usually John, they don't, they know how you weigh apples. Oh, honey. It's okay, it's all right. All right, I'm not talking anymore. No, 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 I want the love they have for one another. Episode two begins with Kate talking about what it takes to keep the house clean. I mop the wood floor three times a day. I wipe the table three times a day. I wipe the high chairs and the chairs three times a day. She's not done. I clean the sink, the countertops, the stove every day. John helps out too. Dust everything, vacuum, do all the corners and Windex if, you know, cause there's fingerprints over everything. Because of this chaos and Kate being a self-titled germaphobe and control freak, she decided to get a cleaning lady to come help keep the house clean. She decided to interview three different companies in one day and found herself overwhelmed for the third as it was nearing lunchtime and the kids were restless. I don't love what she says to Maddie here, but I understand she's definitely overwhelmed and just needs to focus on the crying child and interview. I can't talk to you right now, honey. 14 people are talking to me. I'll be with you in a minute, okay? After the interviews, Kate then does what she calls breathing treatments using nebulizer machines. It's medicine that they are gonna breathe directly into their lungs for wheezing. Basically, because they were preemies, Kate is helping make sure they're able to breathe well, even when sick. In this episode, we also get to meet Kate's sister-in-law, Jody, as in Kate's brother, Kevin's wife. She came over to pick up Maddie and Kara to have a sleepover at her house. Hi, Jody. We are just having fun with twins tonight. And the six kids are being left with Joan. Joan took care of me when I was a baby. Hi. This is all so John and Kate can have a nice dinner together for Valentine's Day. This is rare for them, so the kids don't let them go easily, but they eventually get there. Joel has no issue with his parents ditching him for the night, though. <laughs> Even without the stress of the kids around, John and Kate are hopeless romantics. This conversation is about sharing an appetizer. No, don't share. Get your own. That's what I was going to get. Well, get your own. Oh, aren't they so cute together? At home, Hannah has been so upset at her parents for leaving, she cried hard enough to make herself throw up. If we get the Back to the cleaning lady, two of the three said they weren't interested in cleaning the house, so Kate hired the only option left. Meanwhile, Kate found Hannah sitting suspiciously in her bed. If you've ever watched a kid, you know what's going on here. What I don't understand is why Discovery didn't blur anything. That clip is much longer, but I tried to prove a point and also spare you. After changing her in the bedroom, the cleaning lady heads to that room, so everyone has to go to the basement. And Colin is in love with painted toenails. He is absolutely obsessed. Obviously, Kate can't just hang out with her kids though, so she begins going to the rooms the cleaning lady had already completed and investigates. I can understand this in general, but probably not when the person is still there. That was not touched. What's crazy to me is that they showed the woman who did this job and shared her name. Not sure why they would do that just to make her look like she can't do her job. I'm proud of her for even attempting to work under Kate in the first place. And that's episode two. Episode three starts with Kate mentioning a church in California has invited the family to come speak. And here we are again a large Christian family sharing their life and story on television. My favorite TV show theme. They're only going to bring Maddie and Kara on this trip as they are coming from Pennsylvania, but they also decided to split the sex tuplets between two sitters to make it manageable. You know we need to leave at 1.30 hey, and it's 1.25. Yeah, you stop hounding me? 
I want to blame all this bickering on them being so incredibly outnumbered, but I'm also amazed at how they never seem to like each other in the show. Like I said, I haven't watched this in at least 13 years, so I assumed the show started more peaceful and loving. Before leaving for California, they decided to write a will. This sounds smart considering how chaotic their family situation is. Miraculously, John and Kate were able to find someone willing to take all eight kids if something horrible happened and they both passed. They also discuss how their assets will be divided equally for the kids, and the lawyer gives a suggestion Kate adores. They've said upon completion of college or age 30, for instance, and that's a way to make sure that they, they complete <gasps> That's college. very smart. They make it to California and visit Sequoia National Park. Despite Leave No Trace starting in 1995, John clearly has no idea how to respect nature. So we sent Daddy off the beaten trail. They also take eight giant pine cones to bring back to the kids. If you ever find yourself in a national forest, don't do this. Back in Pennsylvania, the kids are having a blast. My husband found a hat that used to be part of a Halloween costume, and Aiden has had it on his head every single minute since he got here. That is cute as hell. Slay, Aiden. John and Kate finally go to be interviewed at the church. Wanted to know what it was like to have one baby. Yeah. That was our goal. And <laughs> they share they couldn't have made it this far with all these kids without God. And that concludes the episode. Episode four opens with them reorganizing their garage to have more space. It turns out the house that they are currently living in is three bedrooms and two and a half baths. I have no idea how they're making that work even with the kids still being babies. This episode introduces Aunt Jody's husband, or Kate's brother, Kevin. Hi, Aiden. Hi, Joel. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Colin. Hi, Leah. Saying hi to all six of them is so sweet to me. While Kevin and John work on building the storage cabinets, Kate has all the kids playing outside. One of the kids kicks a ball down the street, and John runs to get it. Daddy did not run away. Maybe another day he'll slip away, but he's not going to do it when we're watching. Also while playing, Aiden bites Colin and is told to apologize. Owie. Owie. Tell Colin you're sorry. <laughs> we also see Kate panic after Kevin puts Alexis on one of the shelves he installed. There we go. I mean, Kevin. Kate, girly, if that shelf can't hold up your less than 30 pound child, you don't want it to be used for storage. They finish putting up the shelves and begin organizing as the kids are down for a nap. Then John asks a fabulous question. Did you close the gate when you put the babies to bed? No, because they're not gonna get up today because we're going to get them soon. They're right here. I assume their bedroom is upstairs. So can you imagine six little two-year-olds all walking and crawling down the stairs together all at once? Little drunk toddlers with zero balance, just ready to bowling pin their siblings down at any moment. Chaos. Kate decides the three who came down have to go back to their cribs while the other three get to go outside. The episode concludes with them showing off all the organization. The bottom line is it's done and it's great. And we're halfway through the season. This is much faster to watch than Welcome to Plathville. All right, episode five. This episode is about them attending a NICU reunion at the hospital. It's an event that occurs every two years to celebrate the babies and the team that provided for them when they were in the NICU. Kate mentions that on average, the babies were in the NICU for six weeks. This morning is extra stressful because Kate just got off work and getting all six kids ready is stressing her out. She keeps asking John to do this and he lashes out from stress too. Hey Kate, when are you gonna pull the stick out? Cause it's getting a re really annoying. Damn John, that was mean, but like also valid. At the hospital, they visit with one of their NICU nurses. For the next scene, they are going to New York to celebrate Maddie and Kara's birthday at American Girl Doll. To put it kindly, Kate is a very prepared mom and made sure the sitter was ready. Okay, I wrote 900 notes over okay. there hanging on the desk. All the name tags on the table, name tags on the cups, on the bibs. <laughs> At the train station, John has found himself very annoyed at Kara for having to use the restroom. Tough. Pee in your pants. 
Okay, we'll find a bathroom, all right? They make it to American Girl, and Maddie is upset because Kate talks during the movie when she just wanted to watch it. In the post-interview, John says this. And then it becomes frustrating because now you're being filmed and they're being grouchy. So how would this have played out differently if you weren't being filmed, John? Being filmed really shouldn't change your parenting style, unless it's problematic, of course. Moving on, they go to the ever so iconic restaurant. I do love that the girls have bitty babies and not exactly American Girl dolls. Same brand, just baby dolls instead. I had the American Girl lookalike doll. Now that was early 2000s girlhood right there. I should have given Kate a second before I called out the bitty babies because she then gives the girls each of their own lookalike dolls. Okay. What an amazing birthday. And that concludes the episode. Episode six is about grocery shopping. I am an absolute hater of grocery shopping, but shopping for a family of 10 sounds horrible especially because Kate believes in feeding her kids healthy and organic options whenever possible. Logistically and financially, that has to be insane. One theme that keeps happening in this show is Kate putting the kids in time out. That's totally fine, but I'm weirded out by two things. One, the camera crew keeps zooming in on the crying babies as they're being punished. And two, Kate keeps telling her kids to obey. I can't really explain it outside of that weird, just making me feel icky feeling. I've only heard religious parents use it as a way to get their child to behave exactly as they want them to. And I don't know, I, I'm just not a fan. You need to obey. Daddy asks you to obey mommy while he is at work. Kate is rushing to get the babies to sleep for a nap so she can go to the store before Kara and Maddie get home from school. So who is home while the babies sleep? Their neighbor, Beverly, comes over. While Kate is in the store, the show includes a countdown timer of two hours, which is when the baby's nap will end. I love this because that is just so unrealistic to how toddlers nap. Some days you get the perfect nap and a lot of days you don't. But with six kids all in the same bedroom, there's no way. I'm not sure where Kate finds the time to organize and prepare herself before shopping, but she's able to use coupons to make grocery shopping quite affordable. For a family of 10, she says she's spending about $150 a week on groceries. Adjust that for inflation, and that's just under $220 today. I could never. And miraculously, the countdown is perfect. Hello, I'm back. Staying on the topic of finances, it's time to go Christmas shopping. John and Kate agreed each child would get $100 spent on them. A uh, $800 Christmas in 2006 is pretty impressive. They also do it in sort of a secret Santa way where each kid buys the gift for another kid. I think that's pretty cute. In early 2000s fashion, they go to Toys R Us. As Kate is checking out with some gifts, John stays back with multiple kids and begins messing around with some toys. Somehow this wasn't what Kate wanted, so she starts flipping out on him. Hello, I need your help. Go to 11. No, I can't. Would Why? you come here? Can you imagine being in public and having your spouse talk to you like that? I'd be horrified. She keeps doing this too, all throughout the store. She was somehow very confused why that annoyed and embarrassed him though. Annoyed with me? Yes, very. Why? Embarrassed. Because the way you yell at me in there, like, I'm a, like I'm a freaking dog. On another note, they find a lot of babysitters for this show. I don't know the timeline between the episodes being recorded, but the they find time away from the sex tuplets regularly in this season. This time, they're at the mall because Kara and Maddie didn't get their gifts for each other yet. We set up another chip where it was just Kate, myself, and Maddie and Kara. We went to the mall. Honey, don't ramble. Like, say I'm it in five rambling. seconds. Can the man just exist for two seconds? Why were they okay with showing this to the world? And why did my 10-year-old self watch this? And 
lo and behold, they purchased the same toy for each other. And now it's Christmas. I am obsessed with the baby gate surrounding not only the tree, but the presents. Absolutely genius. I think this is no, the best Christmas this, we had. This year was awesome. Mm -hmm. And that concludes episode six. Moving on to episode seven, we get another John, Kate, and the twins outing when they are getting headshots of the girls for fun. But first, they have begun a traditional Saturday morning pancake breakfast. Do you want more, Hanny? The next scene is all about their potty training and how Kate decided to only start with the three girls and we'll start with the boys sometime later. It turns out they will be taking Hannah and Leah with for the photo shoot so that their sitter is only left with four kids instead of six. Kara and Maddie were completely amazingly, almost to the point that I had tears in my eyes, natural at what they needed to do. They wrap up the photo shoot and head home. <laughs> The episode ends with John and Kate admitting they couldn't do any of these things without the help from their friends and family. And now on to the season finale, episode eight. In this episode, Kate is surprising John with a five-day trip for the two of them to Key West for his 30th birthday. Their friend Beth, who watched four kids earlier in the season, will be watching all six kids this time. Maddie and Kara will be going to Uncle Kevin and Aunt Jody's again. During an interview moment, one of the girls complains that a booger wipe was dirty, but Kate just wanted her to use it. It's a new one. Kara got a new one out of the drawer. Just wipe your no, nose, please. I didn't. Shh, Kara. Oh, yes, I did. What a good big sister. Then it came time for the family dinner and surprise. Have you ever been to the Florida no. Keys? So. Well, you're going <gasps> tomorrow. What? <laughs> Their next morning is quite hectic, getting the kids to Jody's, Beth's, and having all the suitcases they needed. You know, you forget to go on trips by yourself and remember that you love each other. The girls and their cousins bake some desserts. One, two, three. Mm. Back in the Keys, Kate is as sunburnt as it gets. A romantic cruise. It turns out that she likely had sun poisoning, and so she lays down on John during the cruise. After five days, they head home and go to pick up the kids. And she opened the door and they like attacked her. It was like a swarm of bees. Mm -hmm. From an abundance of babysitters crying and bickering, I actually found this season to be very boring. Maybe annoying is a better description. Now, I'll be honest, I've ignored the majority of what happened to this family outside of knowing they divorce and minor details about Colin's situation. I'm just joining in now and have five seasons to go. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and comment below what your thoughts on this family and this season are. To everyone that has taken the time to subscribe, thank you. It means the absolute world to me. Okay. Bye.